Welcome back to Check the Vending Machines. This is a weekly pop culture podcast on the internet where two best friends get together, talk about pop culture stuff. I'm Jason. That is Zach. What's going on, man? Jason, look, we're just going to, we're skipping the pleasantries. I'm just going to about to get into this because. Sure. One half of one of the greatest experiences in my life has now been fulfilled, which is that part one of Dune yeah. has now been released and we both watched it. And I, yeah. I don't know exactly how much you liked it, but uh, I fucking love this movie. Yeah. I, um... I'm trying to think now that I've had a week to kind of, like... So, uh, I watched it last... Yeah, because I watched, I watched it last it weekend. Morning, so... Yeah, I watched it last weekend because I found it online. Um, and after a week to have... I didn't watch it again. Mm-hmm. I just let it sit there in my brain to, like, aerate. Yeah. I think it's a really, before we get into it, I think it's a really, really great movie. Yes. Do I love it? I think there are definitely things I, I, I'm happy to talk about. I think there's definitely I think flaws in it for sure. But overall, yeah. I'm very happy with what I watched. I think I am 90% happy with what I watched. Mm. The things that I did not, I was not happy with are not humongous gripes. Mm-hmm. But they're gripes enough that I have to mention it just because that, that's what stopped me from being like, okay. this is completely an amazing movie. Okay. Like, it's a, every day I would love it. Maybe that those gripes would be different when I can do, you know, Lord of the Rings Extended Edition. Like, I can do all three in a row. Right. If I can do part one and part two back to back, maybe it would be completely different. Yeah, and I, think that, and I think that's one of my biggest things that, like... I like it because I, I, I appreciate the fact that they're not trying to cram this, like, book that is full of shit into a two-hour-and-a-half-long movie. Like, I'm glad that they're taking yeah. that time to give things room to breathe and really try to, like, extend stuff out. But it's been a while since, like, I've watched a movie that is a part one of something that does not feel like a definitive story like normally even if Mm -hmm. something is like spread out into separate parts each part is kind of still its own like encapsulated thing like there's a complete story in there this movie Mm -hmm. does not have like a complete story in there like the end of this movie is like basically like all right so i guess now we're getting into act two now so it's a very strange it's a very strange movie in that aspect like it's not the traditional like three-act structure this is really like all just set up for the story that's going to be happening in this next movie yeah it's well it's quite literally like i haven't read the book so i can't say how much of the of the book it's percentage wise Mm -hmm. but if i'm basing it off a three three part structure of a story Mm -hmm. i'm getting 1.5 yeah you know i mean and um immediately after i finished it i was like okay that's that was a really great time Mm -hmm. I really enjoy it. I still really enjoy it now, just looking back on mm-hmm. it. And I think what really amazed me about Dune, having no context besides the basic osmosis of being a fantasy science fiction reader, mm-hmm. like just knowing what I know is because I happen to read a lot of books and read a lot of fantasy in that genre. Having and having having multiple copies of Dune sitting on my bookshelf to read and only reading the first page every single time and then that's all i read um i've read that fucking like cradle scene of the baby cradle scene a billion times and just won't get past that yeah um that's all i know so when i watch this movie i'm i'm sure there are things that people who really love dune are probably like cracking down on like like if i watch batman or if i you know mm-hmm. the, whatever who know whatever you know example yeah but like i think for me what what and and we can talk about this in a second if we if we if we want if it comes up, mm-hmm. but what what Dennis does and his this podcast 
can basically serve as a video and audio archive of our fandom for Dennis. We love Dennis. Um, we we love him. We call him by we call him by his first name pretty much because we can't. I mean, we are on name. first name basis with him, so it yeah. just is how it is. And I've I mean, the only movie I haven't seen of his is Arrival, and that's purely because I just don't care about the cast. I'm trying to look at his. I want to look at his film art because I think I've seen. I've seen everything. All except of his for big movies. I'm trying to think if there's one I haven't seen because I've even because I've seen Arrival too. I mean, if, he, if he's had like a indie film before he did Enemy and before the movie before that or whatever or after that, then I, I just I probably haven't seen that then if it's like some sort of like you know. Yeah, I mean, I'm definitely starting with like, you know, like Enemy. Hold on. Enemy is kind of the, the earliest thing I remember. Uh. Let me see here. I mean, he's got a bunch of stuff before Prisoners, but Prisoners is probably like his first big one. Yeah. So Prisoners, Enemy. Oh, that's the one I haven't seen. Is I haven't seen Sicario. Great movie. So that's Fantastic the one of movie. his that I haven't. You haven't seen Arrival. I haven't seen Sicario. Yeah. Well, to me, Sicario was it's the outlier because it's the most not. It's from what I've seen. Yeah, it's the most not. Dennis movie that Dennis has ever done, and 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 by that I mean setting wise, yeah. Because thematically, it's absolutely Dennis mm-hmm. Dennis movie, but in terms of setting, it's it's not. I mean, Prisoners will be the closest thing to that, mm. and then even even Dune in terms of like teams and special military and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, but being fans of this guy and his work and the way that he films stuff, and we know obviously twenty forty nine. And he doesn't dumb stuff down for you. No. So when I'm watching, I was watching Dune, and I'm like, this dude is not dumbing it down. And I'm sure, I'm sure between the script and between however the fuck, um, Herbert wrote it. What? Oh, I was trying to get it to full screen, and then I saw like stuff oh, okay. up on the screen. I was very confused. Yeah, that, I think I actually hit like hit like an emoji button because I was trying to get it off my screen. I am. Um, but no, so and I'm sure this, whatever, however, Frank Herbert or whatever the name is, Herbert, whatever, right? Frank Herbert? Frank right? Hebert, I think. Whatever he, however he wrote it, we know he writes it the omniscient, omniscient whatever. Yeah. So I'm sure the de- text is still super dense, yeah. but from, as a sci-fi movie watcher or just a regular movie watcher, mm-hmm. and this obviously isn't like a French new wavey kind of movie, but you can tell that that's what he, this dude has watched that stuff. This dude's super into avant-garde stuff, mm-hmm. super into dense stuff, or at least he, it seems like he is from the movies he makes. And you watch this and while he is, it's the duality of, you have Jason Momoa who is playing Jason Momoa characters. Yeah. And there is the super, and this can make no sense to me, Zach. So you can, if you, if I'm, if I'm not making any sense, tell me, I mean, I'm the not movie do an expert, feels... but if I know something, I will let you know. Well, not not about that, but for sure that too. But more so about what I'm about to say is that the movie itself, to me, is in the same time extremely blockbuster mm. with conversations, but then in terms of the on the flip side, at the exact same time, he is not making it easy for you to comprehend what's happening in the world. Yeah, I mean, I think that's definitely a part of it, and I think that's definitely a thing that, in all of his movies, especially his sci-fi movies, I guess Arrival will probably be the one exception. Like, he spells out what's happening in that pretty clearly. Especially, I mean, the whole premise of the movie is based around you actually knowing what the fuck's going on. So, um, But, I mean, like, the way he did Blade Runner, too, um, I think he's very big on, like, yeah, it's definitely, like, a blockbuster movie and, like, scope and, like, the dialogue is pretty blockbustery too. Like the outside of like the world building terms, like the actual like dialogue and character interactions mm-hmm. is like pretty. Well, I I don't even think twenty forty nine does that. I think twenty forty nine is still super Blade Runner. It's still super oh, yeah. dense and dramatic. But this is the first movie where he has like there's jokes. Yeah. Like there's like goofs in it, but in the in the at the same time, the very next scene will be like this super dense science scene about how come they need this to filter out and create the 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 whatever the galactic space dust Mm -hmm. right so it's like all these things and i know for a fact that that was super glossed over in the movie i'm i from what i understand when he writes about the fucking machines that convert the whatever to whatever i i i know that that stuff is super in depth yeah but 
I'm watching this movie and I'm so impressed because like the trailers, the way they cut the trailers were even super blockbustery. Like they were like, this is like a Marvel movie. This is a space opera. Right. But then you turn the movie on and you're like, okay, this has all that stuff in it, but then it's, it is squished between like super immense thematic bullshit. And that's not bad. Yeah. Well, I mean, the, like the scene the, where I think the reason that, I mean, I think that the thematic stuff is, yeah, definitely, like, that's the dentist stuff through and through. But, yeah, the fact that he's been able to fold this blockbuster filmmaking on top of him also getting into, like, his heady, philosophical, and, you know, deep, I mean, look, dude, I, I was nervous when that op- when that trailer has Jason Momoa being like, oh, oh did boy. you gain some weight? No, did you gain some weight? Oh, oh yeah, the yeah, muscle yeah, thing? Uh, yeah. Well, I was like, dude, what are we doing? Yeah what are we doing with this? This is supposed to be like a serious movie. And while that scene still irks me, I understand that it's supposed to be a camaraderie build. The, the, the relationship is there. I understand that. And that's kind of like the appeal of having Jason Momoa, I guess. But to go from that scene to like the scene where, um, Paul's mom is seeing off the, the Bene Gesserit, yeah. the, wiz- the wizard lady, the wizard and you, lady, and yeah. whatever, right? The Aes Sedai from Wheel of Time. Yeah. And then like, they're like, she's going to the ship and it's all rainy and right. And Paul's standing there. Like, that's a super, like, a super that's, talking scene, about mas- yeah. that's talking about Messiah type stuff. And then in part two, when they even, when they break down that Paul, is Paul even really the Messiah? Yeah. Like all that stuff is going to get much, much more de- in depth and, and dense. Mm-hmm. And, now that those characters are gone from the first part, I wonder how much it's really going to be Avengers. Yeah. You know what I mean? Well, that's the, that's the craziest thing about it. Cause yeah, you go into this movie and I mean the, I think the big pull for this first movie is, it was, yeah, specifically like the, the all-star cast with yeah. like, you know, Josh Brolin Oscar and Isaac. you got Jason Momoa and you got Oscar Isaac and you got Rebecca Ferguson and all these other people. And you get to the end of this movie, and it's like, spoiler alerts for anybody who hasn't seen it, but, like, everybody besides, like, Timothy Chalamet and Rebecca Ferguson is fucking dead, so... I don't remember. How did Josh Brolin die? Did he die? Well, he, he led the charge of the people, and then the Harkonnens, yeah. like, basically, like, fucking scorched Blue earth, like, yeah. anybody that was in that area. So, yeah. I mean, I guess he technically could be alive, because right. we didn't technically see him die. We see his body, yeah. But it's definitely implied that, like, he got blown up, so... Yeah. Watch him be there. Watch him be back. I mean, I'd be glad to see him back because yeah. I liked his character a lot. He's super fun. He reminds yeah. me of like the. He reminds me of like a like a like a medieval like a like an old surly knight type of character that like um, yeah that yeah like the young like hotshot knight is like trying to impress and like or no you know what the best example of it is he's like Anthony Hopkins and Zorro like that type of character. I, I mean, I kept thinking Auron from Final Fantasy X, but that's just him. There's no, his arm is fine. I just kept thinking, like, this is like <laughs> Auron. Yeah. Know? Um, but with all, with, that's what was really impressed me. I mean, obviously, in terms of the, I'll talk about the direction in a second, yeah. but like, um, the uh, the C special effects design, mm-hmm. the uh, in terms of like the graphics, CGI stuff, the 3D animation stuff, that stuff yeah. all looked amazing. Ships look really great. The technology really of it is really rad. Design. I really like the dragonfly ship stuff. Those that's such a neat looking that's, design. Yeah, that's all cool to me. I, I what I don't understand is why it has wings because we can fly through space. Yeah. So I don't know why we need wings. Yeah, so the the practicality fine. of it doesn't make a whole lot of sense. I'm sure that there's like because I definitely haven't got to like. I don't think I have at least in the book to like where there's so, or if they did like his narration like just not make it stick with me but yeah. um i'm sure there's some explanation for like why the, sh- the ships are like that because knowing dennis like if he he made the ships look like that it's because they look like that in the book so there has to be some particular reason why mm-hmm. they're like that but yeah i don't it doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me of why they're yeah they're like dragonfly but it's also it must be a thing specific to Dune Arachnid. as to why they're like that. Because then I remember that at the beginning they show Jason Momoa and he's got like that's just like a typical yeah. like fighter like UFO type. I, I ship. guarantee it's something about how like 
the spice in the air yeah, has like to that. move around or um, maybe I, it like it's caught in like jet like engine things and so you have yeah. to use like something like that because yeah even Probably. on the ships like the, the dragonfly ships like have jet engines but like they're very sparingly used so maybe yeah it's yeah. something like with the spice in the air or something like that yeah and, and i um i like all the designs of the ships i i still since i hadn't read the book or have haven't read it, i like the armor know, design anything. too I think the yeah costuming looks great. Yeah. Um, what really surprised me, and maybe I don't know if it caught your attention or not, was that even in, in the the Dragonfly ships, mm -hmm. they go for this like retro futuristic insane design yeah. where like the ship on the outside looks abnormally futuristic. But yeah, they go inside the they interior got like, like analog switches flips, and shit switches, like that. Yeah. yeah. But what really killed me about that was that they have the outside, which is like these super shiny, intense, mechanically made planes, planes and ships and gliders or whatever. Mm -hmm. Inside you have all these buttons and switches and like circle gauges or whatever from like from whatever. But what killed was the fucking headsets. Yeah, he's got the weird like dual it headset looks thing. like the one headset that they, they show where he's like turning his head has the singular mic. I'm like, dude, that's the basic Xbox 360 headset from 2007. That's the basic. You tell me I haven't like got better technology since 2007. Has the little, the little, the little puff thing too, the little microphone dense, whatever. I'm like, dude, even that, you can't have like cool, yeah. like a type microphone. Yeah. So it was this weird, weird choice between like, like how do we have like energy shield? First off, hold okay. on. Okay. Can we talk about the energy shields and how, how they're the fucking useless? How the fuck does useless? that work? How the fuck does that work? It doesn't... I, I mean, I understand how it works. I just don't understand why you'd ever use it because as soon as you know how it works, it becomes useless. Because it works so at, like... It, work? it stops high-velocity things from hitting you. But if something is slow enough, then it breaks through. Because that's when he talks about... Because he does the thing in the beginning where he, like, taps it and it stops it, but then he, like, presses it into yeah. it. And it in the red goes. But through. even then, when 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 um, because the ships have it too. In the way that the bullets, when they do the the raid on Dune against the yeah. uh, House Atreides, ships have the shield too. But they have like the they had the specific bombs that like they didn't just like drop. They like drilled into the shield and then they exploded. But so it's like it has something that, to do with like sure. the way the kinetic force works. But see, I don't even I don't even get that because. From what I understand, if I remember correctly, it's been a week now, mm -hmm. but there's a scene where, I can't remember if it's either Josh Brolin or Jason Momoa, is talking about the sword he has, where he's like, yeah, this this is meant to pierce shields, or whatever, he, where he's like talking about some sword he has or some shit like that. I think it's, it's the, like never not, it must be like the Chris Star dagger or whatever. The, the Chris or whatever. Whatever the point yeah. being like, so are you going to push that in slowly? Or are you going to push that in, like, what's the point? If it can go through shields... Like when yeah. Jason Momoa was fighting at the when the when the house is getting raided and Momoa is fighting the house, mm. I'm like, I don't see how that is not going through the shoe, but then that one is going through the shoe. I don't I didn't understand the concept because like it's not very it's not it's one cutting, of those things where it's not verbally explained. It's like it's only physically it's only visually explained. But I feel that like point, that's just, one of those just, things where, like, I feel like you could take the time to, like, actually try to explain the, the mechanics of, like, what's going on. Yeah. Because at that point, we're seeing him stab, he gets stabbed, it cut, goes through the shield. I'm like, okay, well then, why have a sword training, why having a, why would you have a sword art style where you're not always stabbing? Like, get a rapier. Well, I think the thing is that stat, it, it prevents stabbing. I think that the th I think the preferred short style for that would have to be relying on slashing because slashing would be, first of all, it's a slower movement. And also as Doesn't soon as you hit, it would, it would slow down and that would make it go through the shield. So it'd be like more focused on like slashing than stabbing. But he gets stabbed though. It goes through the, sh when he's behind, he's fighting the guys and they come behind him and they stab him behind him. Don't they? Yeah, they do stab him from behind. He definitely so, gets stabbed and through him. He's getting, he's getting cut and it's blocking it. And then he gets stabbed and it turns red. Well, maybe that's one like, of those things where like, cause he gets cut first. So maybe the cutting like, uh, makes the shield like lose its integrity. So then they can stab him through. Cause I know he definitely gets like cut up first and then he gets right, stabbed. Here we go. After I literally just googled it and there was like a billion billion how to do, how around. to do and shield how to do and shields work. Yeah. Yeah. I'm I'm going to go on Reddit because it's more untrustworthy than USA today. Okay. Um 
as it's described in, this is enough to do in Reddit, subreddit. As it's described in the books, the shield's actively generated field that behaves like a non nuisance Okay, what the fuck are we talking about? What's that? I don't know what that is. Letting things pass only if they move slowly enough. It also produces ozone, probably by destroying fast-moving water molecules the same way. Okay. How this would exactly work is not important, but the field... But a field that influences particles based on their speed should also be able to... Okay, okay. Oh, okay. I well, still... I'm looking at the Dune wiki, but it's like... So shields can be calibrated to permit a passage of matter below given speeds, which you need to do because otherwise the shield would basically suffocate you. So that's, the, I guess, the weakness is that if it's below... Yeah, like it's a kinetic thing. Like if it's below a certain sh speed, it can go through the shield. So. They invest, and this, I'm not trying to get nitpicky on the most popular selling science fiction novel of all time. I'm not trying to do that. Yeah. But my point, my point would be this: um, you make a space suit that has oxygen in it, and you make you crank that bitch up to a thousand percent, so you never get hit. Yeah. You know what I mean? And you just go out there and you fucking cut people up. Yeah. I'm just, that's just what I'm saying. But it didn't make it didn't really make sense to me because they kind of they he Dennis shows us the visual cue Paul. But then I still don't understand how it works. I'm not trying to depict. I'm not trying to to, to like break down every fight scene because it's it's Dune it's Dune logic. So of course it's going to work within the context of the Dune logic, mm -hmm. and I'm fine with that, you know. But if you're going to show me again, it goes back to the, my whole point about being the rules. And if you're going to show me, I kind of just want to know how someone's getting killed, um, if so I can see because you have a shield. Everyone has the shield. I kind of want to know how people are getting killed. You know. Yeah. But that didn't take away my – that wasn't a detriment to my enjoyment of the fight scenes. I mean, I think they were perfectly fine for what they were. They weren't overly amazing. No, I mean, Momoa had probably the best fight scenes. And even But even those to me were, like, yeah. fine. They're they fine, fine, yeah. I mean, they're better they than, like, like you know, anybody else's. But, yeah, they're still just, like, they're fine. And, and and they were realistic looking. They weren't yeah. like they were supposed to be like Star Wars. You know, they weren't like spinning blades around yeah. for no reason, which I appreciated. Um, so, I want to ask you about casting. Okay. We talked about last week how we have never seen Timothy Chalamet That's true. in anything. In anything. Yeah. No. After I, watching I really Dune, how really do you ever feel seen about a single one of his movies? I, neither have I until now. Yeah. How do you feel? But again, my point being last week was that he's everywhere, and that bugs me. Right? Yeah. Because whenever someone, whenever the when Hollywood's telling me the Hollywood machine is telling me to like somebody, my initial reaction is, "Fuck <laughs> off." I'm not gonna like that person. Right. Yeah. After seeing Dune, at least in this particular role, mm -hmm. I can safely say. I can still avoid watching his movies. He was not bad. No, but I, I don't didn't think he's get emotional bad, over he's him. Not, I mean, he's not. You know, it's weird because it I feel like the role of Paul is not somebody that's like. And this is the thing that I disagree with because I, I think this is what started our conversation last week, where I was one of one of my coworkers that said that she'd seen the movie early and she didn't like Timothy as. Paul, because she thought that he wasn't charismatic enough. And watching the movie now, I'm like, that's not Paul's character. Like, he's not a super charismatic, like, Marvel action star. Like, that's not the kind of charisma that he has. He is the reluctant kind of leader. And also, I feel like he kind of he kind of gets a little bit more of that charisma thing as the movie goes on. Like, I feel like the part two is going to be, like, a whole different character, I feel like. Especially yeah, if I mean, I would assume any so. of those, like, fucking visions come to pass. Like, that shit was fucking bananas. Which also, yeah, they cock-teased this a lot with the visions, because I thought that that shit was going to be in the movie, and they're, like, they were basically into this movie, and that like they're like, nah, that's part two, bitch. Yeah, also that the, uh, talking about the visions, where it's like, all right, we see the black guy, okay, that was a fast fight scene, I don't care. Why, why, why did we... <laughs> well, why I mean, it that so fast? part was like, it's weird because then you have all those the visions with the black guy and he's in them. I'm like, okay, so he's yeah. going to be like Paul's mentor. And then you get to that scene, he's like, oh, he's, he's fucking dead. Uh, okay. So even with that fight scene, I know we're jumping around, yeah. but that fight scene, I, I, 
I think I understood how Paul won. I would I would like to I probably would I'm probably I don't think I understood it. how he, he won. I my I just watched the movie today and my visual memory of that scene is like Steven Seagal doing the knife fight in Under Siege. I was like so what the hell is even I it just looks like you're waving shit around. I was just after I watched the movie I was okay. I was reading up on Paul, the character, mm -hmm. just like his like his powers. Yeah. I was like, what the fuck are his powers? I know he's got right? the like, voice, is he... which is like somehow some sort of mind control thing. Well, that's what the, that's what the ladies do. Yeah, right. That's the lady pass, the lady witch power. Right. Okay. Cool. Got that. He has the um, he has visions, the, the visions and like the whatever. So what I think he did, and I could be wrong. I haven't read the book. This is from what I understand that he can see at so eventually that Paul can see everything. He can see the future, the the past, mm -hmm. and the present, and whatever. He can see it all at one time. Yeah. So I'm think that he, when he was like looking like this, up, he was like putting his head against the wall after he talked to Zendaya. Mm -hmm. I think he saw all the right moves that he had to see. Well, I think that they kind of. I agree with you because I think they have that bit. I think it's before he talks to Zendaya, but he has yeah. that bit where he basically sees that he loses and that he dies. Yes. And right, so, yeah, I think that. he used that, and he's like, this is how I could beat him. But they bait you, though. They bait that because, you know, even at the beginning of the movie, mm -hmm. Josh Brolin's like, sometimes you have to die or whatever. Which is also, yeah, a weird thing where it's like, okay, so I think he's going to die, and then somehow he's going to be like, he's so actually going to be I Jesus was, and, like, be yeah, reformed. I was thinking, like, okay, so the, he's going to fight this guy. He's desert and realize Jesus. That he, and realize that he can't, he can't out-sword him. So he's gonna have to take the stab and then in turn, oh, like stab him thing. while he's holding the dagger, like getting stabbed in the gut right. to stab him, or do what you said and like get stabbed, die, and then like come back. I didn't. They were setting you up, and at this, at least at this point, mm -hmm. I don't see the setup. But maybe in part two, that's gonna happen. Mm -hmm. He's gonna take this a dagger or a sword or whatever, and then when they see his powers, they'll be like, "Oh, he is the Messiah," even though we know he's not. Because I've I've read some reason what the story's about. Because yeah. um, uh, I think the whole point of the story is that like not trusting one person is supposed to be this Messiah, yeah. like not giving all power, or whatever. Mm -hmm. So, but that last fight seems so short, and I kind of wish they walked a little more into like, okay. Are, is Paul is Paul doing that? Is he now seeing visions of potential futures? Like, yeah. at least give me some of that. Don't make me walk out of here being like, okay, what did he do? But then also, why don't you just tell him to kill himself? That too. Well, I guess that I guess that could kind of be considered like dishonorable. I guess in a way. Is it? Who cares? I mean, I guess. Tell, tell I him. I mean, all I feel like, like in the way that they're kind of setting up the. Freeman culture, what, it seems like I, it's very like I didn't get traditional I like combat and like trial by honor type of thing. And I assume asking yeah. somebody to kill themselves would be a dishonorable well, thing. I, I understand they why they why I got, at first I was like, why isn't his mom just being like die? Well, right? yeah, after the because then they definitely show that like she can just do that with the yeah. Harkonnens. But I I under I was watching the scene being like, okay, so why are you guys afraid? Paul's mom just be like. All of you guys kill yourselves, and she, and she can do it. Yeah, but I I know why. When I was in the middle of watching, I was like, okay, okay, I gotcha. I remember why because they're grooming this. Yeah, they're grooming Paul to be the the prophecy. Okay, gotcha. That's why she's not doing it. Yeah, you know what I mean. They're not actually afraid. Yeah, because Paul knows and his mom knows that they can just get out of this. Yeah. Let us go, and they'll go. But they have to both be there. To fulfill their fake prophecy that they've implanted in this culture. I get it. Yeah. You know, it just kind of made me like, why even have this fight then? Except for the fact that it's all about showing the, you know, yeah. fake Messiah trajectory or whatever. Right. Um, that kind of made me weird. So what, what really bugged me, I will get to this now. Okay. What really bugged me, and they're not really a huge bug, but a uh, thing I noticed, and maybe this goes back to being a part one of a part two-er. Is man that pacing was rough at the beginning. Yeah, well, I feel like it takes I enjoyed a while it. for them I to actually it. get to Dune, and then even once they get to Dune, yeah, I mean, there's definitely parts where like, yeah, the pacing is like super. Well, the problem is that like they're info dumping. Well, they're info dumping and they're world building the shit out of it, which I appreciate a lot, but it's also like. 
for me, and I assume for you too, like you know the point is coming where like everything's about to just fucking implode. And so you're waiting for that to happen and then you get to like almost two hours into the movie and then they're like, okay, everything's yeah. about to implode now. Yeah, because really it's like more than half the movie is kind of like set up just to get to the Freeman. It's set up Freeman. world building and political intrigue shit is like the Which, first like uh, four they, hour 40 of the movie. They didn't dive into that enough. No, Besides I don't think the they basic, did. Like, like all the stuff with like, which I think is explained a little bit better. Like the general overview is explained because in the in the book I definitely didn't get that at all. Where it's like the emperor's like also like mm-hmm. against House Atreides. Like even me reading the book, yeah. like I didn't really get that that the emperor was like against him. Um, so I think they explained that really well. Like the especially like the com- like you you know the Harkonnens are fucking pieces of shit. Like that's. Yeah, Obviously, and, like no and, matter and how keep, you write that, but they say but the like, emperor yeah, stuff is is a little bit more intriguing. And I feel like, at least for me, reading it, it wasn't as easily spelled out as it was like in the movie. That like, well, watching it, it doesn't make sense to me as to why they're trying to set up Atreides anyways. They don't. I don't really. Well, they kind it. of say it, but they they say it without really saying it, which is the fact that like turmoil makes it better for the well, emperor. The turmoil thing, but it's also the fact that House Atreides. Among the the great houses is basically like being seen as like almost to a point where they're at like their power and influence is like beginning to rival the the emperor. So it's taking away any sort of, you know, secondary power that could take, you know, the throne away from the emperor. So that's that's basically the whole part of it to it, because nobody's going to trust the Harkonnen. So that's why I assume he teams up with the Harkonnens, because like. Nobody's actually going to want to give those, like, fucking vile pieces of shit power. And they don't really want it anyways. They just want money, so. I, they didn't seem that bad to me. They didn't, show me enough to, to, they didn't show me enough to believe why they're so bad. Well, they're slave for, people, you know. so there you go. That's racist, so. Well, they just didn't tell me enough. They, like, they're like, yeah, they're really shitty. And they like money. Yeah. Well, give me some scenes. Show me what, what Arrakis looked like when they were there. You know what I mean? Like. Yeah. At least show me. Don't just tell me. Like, give me. Let me see some fucking brutalness. Yeah. There's, you know? Well, there's a lot of definitely a lot of that of like the the tell don't show. Also, I don't know because it's like right? it's weird because there's like a lot of stuff that's like tell don't show, but then there's also a lot of stuff that they do that show don't tell. So. Yeah, but so speaking of that, actually, because it kind of ties into what I was about to say, Jason Momoa's like, man, these sand people are like demons. Yeah. Really. Because I saw Paul kill a guy in three strikes. Um, first of all, if they're demons, he's Jesus. So there you go right there. Yeah. Well, the point being, like, he just killed him in three strikes. I don't care if he has powers or not. No, I mean, I just care. the fact of, like, demons and angels and that. No, I, I get it. But I was just thinking, like, I, well, he I don't know, fight, like, demons. I mean, he is a... Well, he felt like a bitch. He died in the hallway. I mean, he took out a hallway. bunch of people he died, with he, him. He died, he died in their hallway scene. He had, yeah, he did have his Man, always mandatory he hallway scene. He got, he got clacked. So, yeah, I um really that whole se- sequence of them at that little base or whatever with the lady, mm-hmm. I just, I kind of, I honestly kind of like glossed over. I was like, okay, what's going on? They're talking a lot about bullshit here. Yeah, and, I don't even remember specifically what they were talking about, but yeah, and then Jason Momoa, like, she's like, she's like, I'm a, I'm a fremen, blah blah blah. I mean, she here, basically blah, was blah, like, blah. she. Yeah, she was like, I'm a Fremen because I love the Fremen, and then you're going to take this ship, and I'm going to go on foot for some fucking reason. And then I thought she was about to ride a fucking worm, and then they fucking killed her. And I was like, you motherfuckers, dude. Yeah. I want to see somebody ride all, a worm. All I know is that, like, for years, I did, I did it. there's a band I really like. It's like a hardcore band, hardcore metal band, mm-hmm. metalcore band. And I, for years, I was like, man, this band, this is a really cool name. How'd they come up with this name? And I hear it in the movie. I go, oh, okay. They just they just took it from Dune. But it's this, it's this band called Shai Halid. Mm. I was like, oh, okay. That makes sense. Right. They just picked it from Dune. I, um... I, I, it, that, that scene confused me. Because it made me think, okay, so are there a group of people who are waiting for Space Jesus Paul... 
right? Because they're they're praying the little books, whatever. Right. So they're they're clearly believe in some sort of messiah. Do they also pray to Shai Halud, or is it just that this one lady is? Is it is, is that supposed to be like a separate thing, a separate yeah, religion? Yeah, I, like, I, I didn't not understand. Easily explain because it's definitely a different thing. Because the messiah thing is the what was it? Lashi Gaib or something like that. Something like that, yeah. So I wonder, cause I, I I wonder if like I think I saw it. I think I read it somewhere. I read it maybe when I was like looking up stuff. So like, is Shai Halud supposed to be like the reincarnation of the Creator, and then like Paul or the Messiah is just like another creation? Or I I, I just did, I wasn't so I was confused. Oh, Shai Halud is a sandworm. Yeah. That's it. Oh. Yeah. I thought it was like, oh, the sandworm is the physical body of the one God that created and governs you. Oh, so it's like, yeah, it's yeah, like that's the physical saying, yeah. to, Okay. So I was wondering, like, is it the same religion, but they just, you know, that's the reincarnation. Uh, that's like the embodiment of whatever, the one above all. Mm-hmm. And then Paul is supposed to be like the Jesus kind of character. I, I just didn't know. I was confused. They didn't really break it down enough for me to understand. Yeah. Um, you know, maybe they will in part two. Where they'll, they'll be more, you know... Maybe they'll be like, yeah, we learned how to do the sand walk because Shia taught us or something like that. I don't know. Yeah. Also, they didn't show us enough sand walking. Dude. I know that they're embarrassed. First of all, I'm really pissed off that he actually said that the sand walking thing. I was like, oh, they're actually going to do it. And then the next scene is like them not doing it. And I'm like, it's, what the fuck, dude? They do. He starts it for a second and then they just cut. He did for <laughs> a little cut. bit. And then they go up a hill and he's like, eh, we can't do it up a hill. So like, we're just going to trudge. Yeah. And I'm like, you fuckers, like you're not supposed to do this. Like, even if it's uphill, you're supposed to do the sand walking thing. Cause then, the, cause cause then I, this is I, when um, you have to run away from a goddamn giant sandworm. Cause you didn't do the sand walk. Um, I, uh, this is off topic about this tip topic. So sorry, but I, I, I watched it with my fiance mm-hmm. and she, she left the half, like not even halfway through. She walked away, but in the beginning of the movie, she was there and it's the scene where, um, Paul's talking to his dad mm-hmm. on the hill. And like, I paused, I was like, okay, so, you know, he's going to die for sure. Oh yeah. No, I'm, and she's like, yeah, oh yeah, he's going to die. I go, yeah, there's no way any sort of movie or book or whatever about, kings and queens and hierarchy hierarchy is if the dad or the mom or whoever is, has, has a good relationship with their son or daughter they're for sure gonna die yeah. it never well, like yeah he's raising them. all those death flags and he's like yeah you're gonna take over for me one day and i was like oh that's death flag yeah. right there and he's like you don't yep. have to be anything but my son i was like oh that's death flag right there you're dead you're dying your, your life i mean is even without end. the book i'd be like oh yeah no he's definitely dead yeah he's i knew right away I was like he's this dude's dead yeah this dude is this dude's done so. Yeah. I won't see him in part two. No. <laughs> you know Which is mean? sad, dude. Like I, all these cool actors, and I'm like, damn, like none of them are gonna be in part two. I we wonder, get Bobby Bird Dem, so that's cool at least. Yeah. I read I read a spoiler for the second Dune book. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I wonder if they're gonna do that in a movie. Um, and the spoiler was that there's like a freaking like space holocaust or something i have i remember that because i don't remember where it was but like Henry space was like a space about, crusade or something Henry was talking about dune at one point and yeah he's like space jews show up and i'm like they have space jews well what i think it was it was that like a paul's messiah character mm-hmm. and then all his disciples go out around the universe and commit like holocaust mass genocide in his name oh and Paul's like, oh shit! Can't do <laughs> like, this. What the fuck do I? What the fuck do I do? <laughs> you know? And I was like, I want that movie. Yeah. I want to see Paul sitting on the throne, not Timothy Chalamet, Castle or Jake Gyllenhaal. I don't know. Jake Gyllenhaal would be good. But someone sitting on the thro- the space throne, being like, oh, god damn it, <laughs> you know? Um. But the end. Oh my. <sighs> it's a very. I rough hated. Ending. It's very strong. How how little we got of Zendaya's character. Yeah, and that, that's another one where it's like, yeah, she's like top build and she's like in and like she's in it for minutes 10 minutes. Movie. Like five lines? Yeah. Outside of the, the vision shit, on. which I don't count because it's not really her. I don't count that. So yeah, I don't count it's that. like, yeah, she has like five lines. Yeah, I don't count that shit. That's terrible. And I assume, and here's what I picture, is that part two immediately begins... Because didn't Jason Momoa's character say that they live, like, underground or something? Yeah, they live in, like, cave systems. 
So I'm thinking, like, I'm expecting to see, like, you know, I don't know, like, beehive type shit. That's what I'm expecting, I mean? yeah. Fuck it, I'm, I'm expecting to see fucking I'm expecting Zion something from like Matrix. from the movie Ants or something like that. Yeah, that or, or Zion from Matrix. Or Zion. That's Zion like would be I'm good expecting. too. Oh, dude, if they have uh, a giant rave orgy? Hell yeah. Dude, yeah. Hell yeah. I, uh, but uh, dude, I, I enjoyed it, man. I, I was a good time. Yeah. I think that it was super duper dense for a major movie. Yeah. And we don't get enough of those, especially in the science fiction world. Mm-hmm. And I'm glad that it came out. And I don't, I heard that it was doing less, less than they expected. I don't know. Cause I know, cause it came out a while ago overseas and I think it made a pretty good amount of money overseas. Mm. I, I saw an article, I can't remember where it was from, but that was like projected in the domestic to like, wasn't as um, what they expected, but it could be different now. I don't know. Could be. Because they you have to count HBO numbers, so I, I don't know. And then and that's also the part of it too, where it's like, I don't know how much I can actually like take that, or I don't know how much they're actually like filling on that, because yeah, it's also one of those movies that is on HBO Max at the same time, so like they have to know that that's going to cut into some of the box office that they would make opening weekend. So, Oh, yeah. Um, it says right now, it's Wikipedia, quick Wikipedia search, that right now it's grossed about $147 million worldwide with a $165 million budget. I feel like so, it'll probably make its money back. $165 million budget, plus you have to add another however many... Uh, I think Mike million, said it, that the, good, the golden rule is, is basically double, so... Well, however, much, however many million, five, ten million for uh, marketing. Yeah. So who knows? Obviously, they're on the hook for the second part. I was so mad that you can tell that they absolutely wanted to that Dennis wanted to do a Peter Jackson and like do all do both parts at one time. Oh yeah. And then I googled it and like he was like, yeah, I wanted to do I wanted to do that, but we couldn't. Yeah. Well, I was I was talking about that with my coworker because I was talking about because she was watching it uh, at work for some reason, um, mm-hmm. but but I was talking to her about it, and she was and she didn't even know it was part one because I don't I guess she didn't see the giant part one in the beginning, but uh, I was telling her about it. she's like oh so when's the sequel coming out like, I think I think a lot of people didn't realize this was gonna be a part well one, I didn't by the way. I mean I knew it but like. In the marketing, like it doesn't say it. Like the first mention no, exactly. that they have of it is literally when the movie starts, and they're like, "Do yeah, exactly. part one." And I was like, "And if you're not if you're not up to date with movie news, you're not going to know that this is supposed to be a part one, part two. Yeah, it's very so. strange that they the way they did, did that. I don't know why they wouldn't just like market it as a part one. Because people are like, "Why would I pay money to go see a fucking part one?" Like, Wait yeah, maybe out. that's part of it. Yeah, especially you for know, something that's like that. unknown like that, and it's like, ooh, a partial story for like something that I don't really care about. Yeah. Yeah, that might be part of it, so, but um, but yeah, I was like, yeah, probably the second part won't come out until probably like twenty twenty five at least. But I don't think that long. I think they're gonna start shooting. It well, I'm I, I'm not sure they're shooting it right now, but I don't know. We'll see. I think it'll be up next year. I think it's next that's my year. guess. That's my guess. I think twenty twenty. I think the earliest would be twenty twenty three. Maybe I I think twenty twenty two. I think that they're going to start shooting it here soon and then they'll have, they'll have a year for post like, you no, know, like a, what's it called? Like the rest of the end of the year, mm-hmm. if they start shooting by before 2022 starts, I can see it coming out before the end of the 2022. If they don't start shooting to like midway 2022, then obviously it won't be out till 2023. <sighs> but I think if I they start know. shooting like next month, December, even December, I could be like, I could see them rushing it. I, I could see, see them Dennis like, rushing going it. through. He wanted to film both at the same time. That's rushing it to me. Mm. You know, that's rushing it to me. Is that would that really be rushing it though? Because if in the concept of like shooting both parts at the same time, you'd have enough time yeah. to film both, but then you would also have the period of time in between. The first and the second one, where you could brush up, or you could even do reshoots for whatever. For yeah, but your but your release your release date was supposed to be way before. Well, yeah, they're li- and if you date wanted to like do two movies a year ago, so yeah, and if you were trying to f- film both movies, they they quickly realized, oh shit, we don't have we don't have time to do that, even with even with COVID. I mean, yeah. So it's like 
your release date, original release date was set. You wanted to do two movies, so you thought you could plan to make both in the time frame yeah. and then get done by the original release date. To me, that's like, that's still, that's, that's a speedy shoot. I mean, it's two movies, I get it. It ain't The Matrix. No, at least The Matrix had years between one and two, and then yeah. they filmed two and three at the same time, you know. Um, and it's obviously better to shoot all of them at the same time, just in terms of, you're already out there. You can yeah. you already know the material. Everyone's in the zone. Yeah. You know, look at Lord of the Rings and stuff. I feel like you probably shot a little bit. Like, the way that that movie ended, there's no way they didn't at least shoot a little bit. Well, then, I don't know. Because then, yeah, like, they've got the whole tunnel system and whatnot. And, yeah, if they weren't planning to shoot back-to-back, then they probably didn't get any of that stuff. So, yeah. I, I would love if they were able to, like, just, like, get, like, ten minutes done. And then just be like, okay, that's the trailer. Yeah. Just a vertical slice of the trailer. But, um, well, hey, man. That's Dune. What would you give the rating of that shit? I feel like I'd probably give it a nine. Like, I think that it's got some weaknesses, mm. but I think overall, those weaknesses don't detract from the overall enjoyment that I got of the movie. So I'd probably yeah. give it a nine. I think I'm in the 7.5 okay. range right now after a week. Uh, purely because of part one, part two. Yeah. I think that if I can watch part one, part two back to back, I think that I would be, as long as part two is like good. Yeah, I think it all really. I I mean I think you know I mean I think that number for me would definitely drop because I mean yeah this movie severely hinges on part two because it's complete literally the, like I mean it's it an is, incomplete story the way it is. Well, it is literally Infinity War End Game for me. Yeah. In the sense of like I don't just watch one of those movies. No, yeah, you have to watch both. It, I, I watch them both. That's the way I watch them now. And now they're one. They're either one movie in my mind, mm-hmm. or they're two movies I have to watch back to back. And Infinity War is a great movie by itself. Yeah. But when you couple that with Endgame, it's like okay, this movie is this this experience. Mm-hmm. They both they both are raid so much better yeah like they the tide is so much higher when they're when you're watched back to back yeah so we'll see as long as part two is good which i don't expect it not to because we dennis doesn't make bad movies no you know i mean i think to me his worst movie is enemy personally but yeah i would agree with that i think it's because it's more of like a was it, hey what Dennis? what happened i don't know, I don't know. there was I a spider oh <laughs> yeah i'm not gonna tell you what happened um, so yeah, I think seven point five, and that that could very much change when part two comes out to where it could be, it could both be like whatever. Yeah. Um, but we're about fifty minutes in. Yeah. Do you want to just leave that, leave it at Dune? I mean, or do you want to touch on the other movie? I mean, what do you want to do? We can touch on the other one, but I don't really have a whole lot to say about it. Like it's fun, but like, I don't know. It didn't really like okay. particularly grab me any which way. I also found Howie Mandel's My, character like super annoying. So, yeah, uh, we're talking about little monsters. Yeah, My little monsters. And my gut reaction to that movie because I haven't seen it before, mm-hmm. I, I was this: Fred Savage was so good as a kid. Fred Savage is great. I mean, he insane. He's great. Insane. It's also interesting that his little brother is actually his little little brother. His little, little brother. Yeah. And then you've got the Two, wet bandit as his dad. And you got the guy from uh, Home Alone as his, as the bully. Yeah. Um, number two to me is that the whoever did the fucking special effects mm-hmm. are like for the clo- like the clothing special effects and the makeup that stuff is insane. Yeah, stuff is so good. It's really good. Three, I like the monster three, designs a lot. Yeah, yeah, I'm fine with those. I think most of them are they're fine. Most of them are pretty good. Uh, I mean, Maurice is three, like definitely the standout, obviously, which it should be because he's the yeah. main monster. Uh, right. Number three, my reaction was Pixar stole this movie. Pixar stole from this movie. Which one? From this movie. Pixar no, no, no. Stole which Pixar movie. movie stole? Monsters, Inc. Yeah, hey, Maurice, what do, what do all these stairwells lead to? Oh, those all lead to every, other kids' bedrooms. Yeah, I mean, uh, I guess that's for Monsters me, Inc. the biggest thing for Monsters, Inc. would be the scream thing, which is, like, not, like, a super... That's fine. But the way they get to each other's house, that's Yeah, I mean, that, that part is definitely, yeah, from this movie. Just instead of stairways and whatever, it's just doors, right? Yeah. And they even have like doors that spin around. They have street signs, different areas, whatever. Um, 
the the, the divorce B plot is irrelevant. Why even have that? Well, that was this is the other thing that I was thinking about while watching this movie is like, I mean, this is also one of those things where like kids movies were like this back in the day, but it's like a super mature kids movie or yeah it's like dealing yeah. with like themes with like divorce and stuff like that which is like yeah overall to like the overall plot has nothing to do with anything and it's like not really even resolved like no there's no resolve no. like you don't get to the end of it like they're still gonna be together and you're you get to the end of it i'm yeah. like i'm pretty sure they're still gonna get divorced but now they're they have to go to divorced. california to pick up their kids yeah they pick you up that's it bitch yeah um so that and then i think the other thing i wanted to say oh well, this do a lot of swear words too which is the other thing that caught me off like yeah. Frank Savage says no. ass and I think he calls somebody a bitch. Yeah. So Yeah, bitch, yep. Um I'm trying to think what else. I think that's really it. I think oh oh here's my thing. Mm. To me, my reaction was this is Howie Mandel doing his best Beetlejuice impression. Yeah, that's what it feels like. Yeah. And I can Did see Beale that if I was a this? kid. A the eight? Let me look. This is eighty nine. Is it? Okay. At least released 89. Who knows when it was Beetlejuice is 88. Movie. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. So, maybe yeah, it was. So, unless they filmed this in, like, they did Bill and Ted type thing where they filmed Bill and Ted in 89 and then they released. They filmed Bill and Ted in, like, 87 and then they waited, like, two years to release it or something. That's I don't know. Cool. But I can totally see how if I was a kid in 1989, this movie would be, like, a fun movie. Mm-hmm. Like, a great movie. Because it has the elements there. Yeah. It's not. It wasn't. It didn't blow my mind. Yeah, I thought it was perfectly mid a mid tier, five out of ten. Yeah, I don't think it was like movie. awful to sit through. It just didn't. Yeah, it didn't like blow my mind, and it didn't necessarily like grab me. It was did a little bit at the end. Um, yeah. And I thought the monster world stuff is interesting with yeah, like the staircases and like the mm-hmm. their weird reaction to sunlight and stuff like that, and the fact that they're like. Yeah. They're like bullies, which is very strange. Yeah, like all pranksters. Yeah, stuff, like they're yeah. they're they're pranksters, but like, yeah, like their whole purpose is like to just get make kids' lives miserable and get their yeah. parents to like fucking hate them. Yeah, exactly. So, um, well, well, that's little monsters. We're gonna we're just gonna do that's it. There you go. Uh, and next week will be the last week of Holly, uh, Hall- Halloween with Halloween episodes. Yeah, with Halloween, it's the goal. Um, but, Zach, I, w- I really... Mm. I mentioned this movie before, well, before we're in the podcast. I want to implore you mm-hmm. to watch this movie because I've been thinking about it so much recently. Okay. Uh, I think I'm going to... I, I talked about this, pod- this on the podcast probably two months ago, three months ago. And I'm going to rewatch it tomorrow, probably, because I've been thinking about it so much. Okay. And that movie is Airborne. And I want to re. I, it's the rollerblading movie I was telling you about oh, that has Jack Black in it, and I want you to watch it because you didn't like Rad, which to me is very not Rad, but I loved Rad. You did love Rad. I think it's a f- fantastic movie, and Airborne. It's so bad. Oh god! But it's so fucking good. It's so there. I have to say it again, dude. The writers of that movie didn't know what they were doing. They were like, okay, so he surfs and rollerblades, because rollerblades is popular, and he likes hockey. And, or, and he plays hockey, because he has to move to Ohio. Well, I guess so that makes sense with the that. rollerblades, at least, with the street hawk, so. Yeah, and they when, when it gets warmer, they all, all of them rollerblade, and he's really good at it. And Wait, is there, it, but if it gets warmer, why would you not surf, because it's hot? So you go to Ohio. Ohio. Like He's rollerblading Ohio. feels like a do? winter thing. He moves to Ohio. What's he gonna do? I mean, there's no yes. ocean. He's from California. Well, yeah, if he moves he's in to the Ohio. Midwest, then yeah, you, I mean, you can't surf then. Yeah, he was a California boy. Yeah. So he's always wearing a Baja jacket. I feel like California. But, I mean, I guess rollerblading is still a thing in California, but it's not really yeah, something super, I associate with California. California. Surfing, like, I definitely California. do, but no, rollerblading, super California, super like. Extreme sports, action sports type shit. That's what he's all into. Inline skating. But, like, the point is that the movie itself, it, it is that f- perfect mixture of 90s bullshit. 90s teen coming-of-age bullshit sports movie 
with the young Jack Black in it. Okay. With Seth Green in it. And it's like, dude, this is amazing. Okay. It's so good. If I, can, I, I am so mad that I can't find the Blu-ray of this movie. Because I've learned that one of my favorite genres of movies is this, whatever the fuck this genre is. Whatever this genre is. Action, sports, teen, comedy, the drama, romance. Kid? Is that what you're talking about? Like those type of movies? I, I haven't seen Skateboard Kid, but North Shore. I've seen enough reviews of it to know that it's like same Rad, type of thing. This, Johnny Tsunami, all those kind of movies, right? I love that stuff. Okay. If I could keep, if I, if they can just keep making these, which they don't, these movies are dead. This genre of movies is officially dead, and it's fucking heartbreaking. Yeah, no, they don't really make sports movies anymore. Like because the movies that I want, the movies that I want back are are two two genres. I want video store action schlock, like martial arts action movies, to come back from the video store. Yeah. And I want these movies. Well, I guess Netflix is basically the equivalent of that now with like the video action schlock. Yeah, but they don't. With like stuff that like straight to Netflix and stuff. Oh, definitely, but they're not shot the same, and they don't have the same vibe. You know, same energy. Yeah, that's true. There's energy to those old shitty like 1993 Don Wilson Blood Fist Three or some shit like that. That that movie has fucking spunk, right? Yeah. You go watch like fucking Drive from 1997 with Mark DeCasco. It's like, oh my god, this is. This is the Matrix before the Matrix. This is amazing, you know, which is a fantastic movie. It's on YouTube for free. Oh. Um, so I want to watch that tomorrow, and I'm pro- or I'm gonna, or I've been thinking about fucking. Maybe you can help me out, Zach. Okay. Maybe you can't. I don't know. I don't. I can't remember how how you were with Disney Channel movies when you were a kid. Okay. I don't know what year this was. Disney Channel original. Mm-hmm. Okay. About a guy on a baseball team who likes to bake. Uh, that's, that's drawn a blank with me. Okay, hold on. I also don't Disney like, Plus, so like I don't have the. Ability he like to bakes play. his like. Disney his Plus, baseball team of food. Baseball baking. Baseball. Ba- Literally, I, the first thing I Google is Eddie's baseball million dollar cooking. cookoff. Yes. Boom. 2003, baby. So I was mm. 10 when I came out. I don't know why, but this. I don't know why this made me think of it, but it definitely did. Hold on. Let me make sure I got this right. Okay. Wait, is that right? Is that what I'm thinking of? What? No. Wait. Hmm. Okay, hold on. Damn, dude. So Max Keeble's big move is what I thought of. Yes. Max Keeble, yep. What is the plot... That is, okay, that is Josh Peck. Max Keeble's moving. I still don't remember... What was the other one with Paul Giamatti and Frankie Muniz? Liar, Liar? No, I'm Frankie Muniz. Liar, Liar, right? Was that Liar, Liar? No, that's Jim Carrey, Liar, Liar. Liar something. It's Big liar Fat something. Liar? Big Fat Liar, yeah. Man of Man Big Fat Bonds. Liar, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I used, I, watched the, I used to watch a movie all the time. But what about... Oh, wait, because Max Keeble's big move. That's McGoogles, right? McGoogles is my name? I, I, McGoogles I is my name. That. I like a smoky bone. Yeah, with the giant frog. Yeah, that was terrible. That was nice. What about, what about Snow Day? That was... Do I remember Snow Day? I vaguely remember that. Snow Day, bro. Well, on Snow Day. Snow Day was my Disney shit. Channel? Nickelodeon. Nickelodeon. Nickelodeon, yep. Hmm. Do I recognize this? I vaguely recognize this. That was my jam, dude. Max Keeble's big move was definitely my jam. That shit was... Woo. Max Keeble was great. Harriet the Spy. Was a oh, yeah. That. that was a good one, too. Did you ever watch Clock Stoppers? I did watch Clock Stoppers. I've never seen it. It I just saw is this. not a good movie. I just remember Even seeing for a like, the trailers for movie, it. It's not a good movie. Nick, these are Nickelodeon movies, bro. Fox put Stoppers some are... respect. Yeah, put some respect. Hold on. In Nickelodeon then Disney movie. Channel had their own version of that. I feel like because I feel like Disney Channel Minute also Man. had their own thing that was like a they had, time they had travel Man. type of thing. Yeah, they had Minuteman. That maybe what it was what I was thinking. Of. Yeah, I haven't seen that, but my fiance loves that movie. 
I remember Minutemen not being good. Haven't seen it. I have not seen it, but my fiance loves it, like I said. I, feel like I did watch Clock Steppers too. I can't remember it off the top of my head, though. Oh, I've Frank never Stewart. Seen the trailer oh, never mind. That's why. Because Clockstoppers, I remember the trailer had like him like riding a bike on like in like in slow mo on and he like freeze time and like ride his bike through a fucking whatever. Dude, I tell you what, man. Speaking of, hold on. Speaking of Clockstoppers, did you ever watch that like mid two thousands, early two thousands time travel movie where like the guy's dad like invents time travel or something and he has to like go back into like the medieval times or something to save his dad or some shit. Is it the time machine? It sounds like a kid version of like the Evil Dead or literally, it's called the Time Machine. Okay, two thousand two. Um, yeah, it's yeah, it's literally about a guy like trying to go like save his dad or something. Or... That literally sounds like a kid version of Evil Dead Two, or is that Army of Darkness? Th- that's a Army of Army Darkness. of Darkness. I don't know. I don't watch. This is this is like a this is a this isn't a kid's movie. This is like a full on. The guy dominated for Academy Award. For That's what we makeup. should do next year. Not Evil Dead, because fuck that movie. But like Evil Dead 2 or Armor of Darkness. We should do that too. Why fuck the original Evil Dead? Why? Because that I one's like the it? super scary one. And I don't want to do that one. That's the one with the girl peeks out. That's not super scary. That's the one where the girl peeks out of the basement. She got the fucking demon face. I don't do demon face girls. She got like the exorcist face. I thought you were going to say I don't watch the first one because the girl has to get straight by a tree. Well, I know that happens too. I won't no I won't watch the remake. The Evil Dead, the twenty I don't even remember what happened with the is that worse? I'll watch the original, but I won't is watch the remake. The remake. Wor- is it a worse movie or is it worse scary wise? I think it's worse scary. I think people liked it, but I think it was just worse scary. I can't remember. I feel like Jay hated it, but Jay's also like a super classic horror movie snob, so I haven't seen it. I don't, the lead actress in it, I like a lot. And I was I was like, okay, well, too bad. Mm. I don't like real scary shit. Evil Dead's goofy, so I don't care. Even the first Evil Dead is. Yeah, she got that I mean, fucking not, like not weird goofy. devil face. And she like pokes it's out not, of the thing. Yeah, it's not goofy, but it's definitely like B a B horror movie. You know, mm. I mean, I mean, Evil Dead Two is definitely better. But I'm not an Evil Dead fanatic. Other people are. I'm not. You know? I've never seen any of them, because I always really I always knew her face and I didn't want to watch it. So, it's it's not that scary. That face is terrifying. And you're talking to a guy who like I don't fuck with scary movies. Yeah. You know what I mean? I don't do that shit. I don't really fuck with them either. That's why I'm trying. That's why I was trying to tell you that we should just skip the, the ones that I, think could possibly be scary to me and just go to like, Evil Dead Two or Army of Darkness. Well, Evil Dead 2 is definitely a much lighter movie. Mm-hmm. So there's that. I've heard it's but basically you have to, the same you, plot as Evil Dead 1, but better. It's re- it just retells it. Yeah. yeah. It retells it. They changes some things here and there. Um, and it's all it's like. And then Army movie. of Darkness is Ash Williams in Medieval Times with a shotgun. Yeah. And a chainsaw arm. Yeah. It's that. And then you can watch the show. I only watched the first I do want to watch the show. I feel like I watched I like the, the first, first couple season. episodes, but then I I was I was watching it. And I have a, I was like I have no context for like anything that's going on. Yeah, like you have to understand at least. I feel like you have to at least watch the movies. And I was like, I haven't watched these. I have no idea like why any of this shit is happening. Yeah, yeah, I, I can see. I that. just watched but that I mean, at the tail end of me finishing up Burn Notice, and I knew that Bruce Campbell was in it, yeah. and I was like, I loved him in Burn Notice. I'll watch this, and then I was like, I don't understand what the fuck's. Yeah, I uh, I'm actually I'm really glad that show got canceled, but only because I'm like just kind of over Evil Dead. I hope that it never comes. I hope it's done. Mm -hmm. Not because it's bad. I'm just it's just like people love it so much, and that sounds like I'm being mean when I say that. But it's more like it's one of those things where like I see it's just it's always so talked about, which is perfectly fine because people like it's very oversaturated. It's just this oversaturation about how much people love Ash and like boomsticks and all this kind of stuff. I'm just like, okay, I don't need to see it anymore. Mm. I, I think I'm I think I'm fine if I never see Evil Dead stuff in my rest of my life. I'm perfectly fine with that. But I'm sure people react the same way to like you know Predator or something, which is yeah. like, I love or Predator, the Matrix so probably. I'm... Matrix, Predator, Rocky. Yeah. You know, Rocky Four coming back out. I'm super excited for that. Is it? Yeah, director's cut, baby. Oh shit, for real? Okay. He re he recut it the way he wanted to do it. 
you know. Okay. So they put the trailer out. All right. I mean, I'll, I'm always you know what, down for more Rocky. So. What really confused me was like last two weeks ago, I saw a trailer for uh, King Arthur uh, 4K. Which like King the Arthur? guy, the guy, the, the guy Richie King Arthur. The one with Charlie Hunnam. Yeah, and it was on YouTube. But that's like, like why? Is it terrible. I was like, why did they? I was like, why did they release a trailer? And it's like King Arthur 4K. I was like, is it a trailer for the for the fucking Blu-ray? Or is it? Are they like putting it in theaters? I was so confused. Are they doing a 4K really make, release of it? I guess, but they don't really do trailers for 4K for 4K yeah, stuff. Yeah, very weird. Yeah, I just I just didn't understand. Maybe they're trying like, hey, bu- hey, buy it, please. But like buy that movie. movie's terrible. Like 4K doesn't make that movie better. I'm gonna rewatch it. I might buy it on 4K because it has. I really kind of want to see those anime scenes again. Those scenes kind of. I mean, cool. they're cool, but like they don't make up for like all the other like dumbass bullshit that happens in the rest of the oh, movie. Do you watch the trailer. They they cut it way different. They use different music. They? they don't make it. Remember, remember the original trailer was like super like. They have like hip hop in it or something. I think so. Like, yeah. Like rap music. Well, they don't do that. In I this. don't know. I get that confused because then there was the other person that did like the Robin Hood movie like the a Robin couple Hood, years yeah. after that, and that one had the hip hop music in it for sure. Okay. I just remember like King Arthur trailer being like I I free run and I have like a cool hair yeah and like I that was definitely part of it yeah yeah uh, well hey Zach this is the end of the podcast yes yeah. is there anything else you want to say about Dune Little Monsters and any, any other Nickelodeon movies that you want to mention before we end the pod for the week watch Dune if you haven't watched it don't worry about Little Monsters if you haven't seen it I would agree also watch Max Keeble's Big Move. Uh, I haven't seen it in so long, so I couldn't even tell you if it was good. <laughs> if I don't know if it's still bad. good, but it was like one of my favorite movies when I was a kid. Also, it was like on oh, Disney yeah. all the time, so. I, I completely, completely. Uh, I agree. Was it was that a Disney movie? Really? I found out. I It has to be because I, I looked it up and then it said that it was on Disney Plus, so. Then, yeah, yeah absolutely then. Uh, yeah, Disney, Walt Disney Pictures. Too, yeah, like I definitely thought, thinking about it, that it was a Nickelodeon movie, but I guess it wasn't. Oh, the main actor is the guy from Home Alone 3. Is it? I used to, I used to love Home Alone 3 as a kid. I did not know that. I, wa- I loved, that's the weird one too, because I also really liked Home Alone 3 as a kid. Mm-hmm. But yeah, growing up, it's like, nah, that one is not good. Before we end the podcast, did you ever watch, did you watch the trailer for the new Home Alone? Dude, hold on. Okay. That was the other thing that I was going to bring up to you. <laughs> what a fucking blasphemous piece of shit that was. Yeah. I think we talked about it already where it's like, what the I fuck is know, the point I of, Or no, you know what it I, was? I was listening to Colin's podcast and they brought it yeah. up for some reason. But they said everything that I felt and I was like, yes, justified. What the fuck is this movie? Why? Mm-hmm. Why does this exist? Why are they pretending like it's a sequel when it's it's not? It's li- it's literally yeah. just the plot of the first movie again, but they didn't call it Home Alone. They didn't do the soft reboot shit where they like called it Home Alone. They gave it some weird fucking stupid ass name that makes no fucking sense. I hate mm-hmm. the fucking main kid that they chose. He's not a Macaulay Culkin at all. I don't even remember what that kid's no. from. I recognize him from something, but I saw him and I was like, "Fuck you, get off my TV screen." Uh. And then yeah. it's also full of people that are in the British variety Com- shows that we talked Com- about. Comedians. Yeah, they're all yeah like the, the mom there. is fucking what's-her-face, the Ireland chick that is in... I- Iceland, I- Iceland, Ice- Iceland, Iceland, Iceland Green, Iceland. I think, right, is what her name is? Yep. Yeah. It's, it's B. Ice- Iceland B or whatever. Iceland B. That, and then there's the uh, the robbers are like fucking an American But then the comedian. dad is like Pete Holmes, right? Pete Holmes, yeah. yes. Which is also weird. Yeah. But it's like, American so com- everything else is like American British, comedians. but then it's like Pete Holmes is a dad. So like, what the fuck is going on? Well, the, the other, one of the robbers is American too. Is he? Oh. Yeah, he's an American comedian, I'm pretty sure. Interesting. Okay. I don't know. I barely paid attention um, to it because I just saw that it was like a direct rehash of the first one and I was like getting yeah. pissed off just like seeing it on my... I think I didn't even like look it up. I think it was... It was like one of those ads, like prepaid before, like a YouTube video I was watching on my phone, and like I couldn't skip it, and I was like, "You motherfuckers!" Yeah, I get that, bro. Well, hey guys, thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Mm. 
We'll see you back next week. Don't give money to Home Alone. Check the the whatever machines. fucking. I don't even remember what the name is called. It's like Home Alone, Sweet Home Alone, or something like that. Some I I thought shit. I could be I could be wrong. Maybe it's like, uh oh, something happened. Oh no. Uh, maybe it's Home Alone, Home for the Holidays. Something got something went got fucked up. So we'll see what happens. Who knows how this is gonna end up? Dude, <laughs> so, I hope we didn't hey. talk about Dune.